You know, in this video, I'm going to say some things that I know y'all not going to like and y'all not going to accept pertaining to this female and this police officer. And the images that I'm going to show y'all in this video just documents how much the Negro has bought into this doctrine of victimization and he wants to blame racism for his lot. And these, again, these are talking points that have been injected into this Afro-American Negro via the white liberal. So when you have this incident that took place with this police officer, we all have seen it, the Negroes immediately gain a political erection because now they know that they can preach that ongoing legacy of slavery, institutionalized racism. You know, this cop is brutalizing black children. They don't have respect for us. It's war against black people. And let me say two things before I get into who is the really to blame for this situation. It's not who y'all think it is. The first thing that I'm going to do is on Sunday, I'm going to produce a video to show you irrefutable evidence that these pro-black, back to Africa, red, black, and green Negroes are completely full of shit on this subject. I'm going to pr produce that video on Sunday and I'm going to put it, post it on my other channel. The other thing that I want to say before I get into who's to blame for this is the Negroes that you hear talking about this young girl and they're so upset that this cop did this to this female and they're up in arms and they can't believe it. It's World War III. Oh my God, how could he do this? You, re you really can't take those Negroes serious either because these, these Negroes will only respond when it fits a narrative. If it fits the narrative that we can push the talking points of victimization, meaning that the Negro is being abused, he's being victimized, someone is mistreating this Negro, then they will get outrage. They will show outrage, they will get upset, they will protest, no justice, no peace. And I've told y'all this in many of my videos. But now, if these Negroes are so concerned about children, then you ask them, where is their outrage when a young girl or a young boy is sitting on their parents' couch or doing home homework, riding a bike, playing outside, and they get gunned down by a stray bullet because Bubba is shooting at Leroy over a pair of Air Jordans, a bright yellow gumball, a half-eaten Snickers, or some big butt heifer. And these Negroes, you don't hear nothing from them because it doesn't fit the narrative. You can't place that at the doorstep of white supremacy because all of the participants are black. But now as soon as you can blame it on whitey, these Negroes have selective outrage. I've told y'all this. They will only get upset when they can place it and take it like a Christmas package and wrap it nice and neat and put a red, black and green bow on it and place it at the doorstep of white supremacy, the ongoing legacy of slavery, or institutionalized racism. If they can't place it there, they don't say anything about it. This is the reason why all these children who have been struck down by stray bullets from these two savages shooting at each other, you don't hear nothing from these Negroes. So we can't take their outrage in this case serious. You just can't. And if you Negroes really want to find somebody to blame, it's not the cop. And I know you Negroes not going to like this. And I know a lot of y'all aren't going to have the ability to even connect these dots, but I'm going to connect them for you. Because one of the basic tenets of a civilized society is that you have norms, values, mores that the community at large adheres to to make sure that people function by these values, these norms, and these mores, you have sanctions. 
you have people that you have agreed that they are an authority figure, one of which is a cop. This is the reason why he walks around with a gun in public. So this is something that is agreed upon by the community at large. Now, when you have an authority figure in a school, per se, which where this incident took place, the principal, the teacher, the counselors, the cop, they're all extensions of that parent. So when they tell a child to do something, as long as something that's not, you know, obviously if it's something that's dangerous, but if it's something that's a, a, a request, then it's the same way as if your parents were telling you. So if they tell you, look, get out that chair and go to the office, if you're, it's no different than if your mother or father was telling you, you get up and you go. Because if you take a child who understands that my mom and dad is not tolerating me acting a fool in school, and if this teacher or this cop contacts my mom or dad and let them know that I was acting a fool in school, I already know what it is when I get home. Now, you take a child in that situation from that family structure, he would have gotten out that chair. They wouldn't even have to call the cop. He would be talking to the teacher. He would have gotten up and he would have been pleading with that teacher, do not call my mother and father, because I know if you let them know that I've been acting a fool in school, I already know what it is when I get home. But now, when you have a child who don't have that kind of structure, in the home, when you have a child who don't respect mommy and daddy, then what that child is going to do is that child is going to deal with other adults in the same fashion that they deal with their mother and father. If she disrespects her mother and father, she's going to disrespect other adults because where she learns respect for authority is in that home. So therefore, when that cop, when that teacher told her to get up and she didn't move, when the cop asked her to get up and she still didn't move, it's the same thing that she does in the home with her mother and father. She doesn't respect them. She doesn't listen to them. And she actually believes that she can function in a civilized society disrespecting authority just like she does in her home. So if you Negroes want to try to find out where the source of this problem lies, it's not that cop. And I know y'all not going to like that because that don't fit the narrative. It's in the dysfunctional black family. It's in the fact that your black family is decimated. It's in the fact that the black family has been destroyed. And that sister is growing up in a home where she has no respect whatsoever. Not only does she not have any respect, but she has no fear. When I say fear, I'm not talking about trepidation. I'm talking about the fear that leads to respect. She doesn't respect her parents, so therefore she's not gonna, she ain't worried about if they call her parents. She doesn't care. I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care. My mom ain't going to do nothing. I don't listen to her anyway. My dad ain't even around, so he can't tell me nothing. So I'm on my own. I'm grown. I do what I want to do. This is her mindset. And that stems from the fact that your family is busted up, your black family is decimated. Now, I'm going to tell you, Negro, something that y'all really not going to like. As I, if I haven't already told you something that y'all don't like already. If you want to find the blame for that, you Negroes have to look in the mirror. You Negroes have to look to the Democratic Party that you Negroes support in every major election whose public policies have helped to destroy your black family. And you Negroes vote for them in every major election year after year after year. Y'all sit back and y'all put them in the office, even though their policies have destroyed your community and your family. A black family, mind you, that this chick comes from, is completely decimated. She has no respect for authority. She has no respect for her parents. Because if you, again, if you take a child who understands that my mom and dad is not tolerating that BS, they're not going to respond. If they would have told to get up, they would have gotten up. Because the last thing I want y'all to do is call my, call my parents. She's not worried about if they call her parents. 
she probably know that they wouldn't even get in contact with her parents because she probably didn't even know where her parents are. This is y'all's black family. This is the product. Yo, chickens have come home to roost, Negro. And I know y'all not going to like this because y'all can't blame Whitey for this. Because you are the Negroes who go out in every election and put these folks right back in office. And all you have to do is look at their policies and see that their policies are not designed to rebuild your black family, which is what needs to be rebuilt. Because that's the source of the problem. Because if you had a black family, that, ch that chick would have never even had any contact with that cop. The teacher would have been able to deal with that child, letting her know, listen, your mom and your dad gave me their work number. I have their email address. I can contact them at any moment to let them know what you're doing in this classroom. And if that child understands what it is, if my mom and dad finds out and I'm acting a fool in school, they're going to straighten up. Because you don't have that structure, you get what you get. You get a female who's not, I'm not listening to you. I do what I want. She's told to get up. She won't get up because she doesn't research, she don't respect authority. These are the basic tenets of a civilized society, Negro. But see, y'all ain't going to pay no attention to that. And y'all not going to be able to connect these dots, which y'all going to do because this is easier. Y'all going to go and y'all going to blame racism. Y'all going to say the cop is racist. And y'all will negate the fact that the cop should have not even been called if you had a family unit, if you had a family structure. Because if you had a family unit and a family structure, that would have been dealt with in the home because that child would understand, I don't have to like this authority, but I got to respect it. I didn't like everything that my father told us, but I respected it. And that's all you have to do. You would go out in society it's the same way. You ain't got to like what that cop tells you. You ain't got to like him. Be respectful, go on about your business. But no, if you're going to sit here and think that you can do what you want to do, because this is what you do in the home. She does what she wants to do. She pays no attention to authority. She has no respect for authority. I come and go when I get ready. Can't nobody tell me nothing. That's her mindset. That's the reason why when that teacher told her, listen, I want you to leave my classroom, she didn't leave. That's the reason why when that cop came in the room and asked her to get up, she didn't get up. Because in her mind, she believes I can deal with all adults in the same fashion that I did with my parents, which I have no respect for them. They can't tell me anything. I don't have to listen to them. So therefore, I don't have to listen to no adult. And the, break, the breakdown of your black family is due solely to democratic policies, a democratic party that you Negroes support, that you Negroes back, in every major election, y'all voting 93%, 94%. Y'all went for Barack Obama, 98%. In every major election, y'all putting these folks right back in office. These are the same people who run these inner cities where you have all this crime and violence. The mayor is a Democrat. The police chief is a Democrat. The school board that don't educate your children are ran by Democrats. Democrats top to bottom. These are the people that y'all back. These are the people that y'all support. These are the people that y'all love. Y'all cry crocodile tears over them. Y'all go out in every major election voting for them. And their policies have destroyed not only your community, but your black family. And that's the source of what we've seen in that classroom. You Negroes are going to go to racism because that's easier. Because that's what the white liberal tells you to do. The white liberal tells you, listen, blame the white man. Blame him. It's his fault. It's not your fault. It's not the policies that we promote that created these ghettos. That ain't the reason. That ain't the problem. No, the problem is racism, institutionalized racism, post-traumatic slave syndrome, the ongoing legacy of slavery, and all this other claptrap. While you have some of these bojangling, buck-dancing Negroes who still walk around citing this Willie Lynch letter. 
even though it has been disproven by not only white scholars, but black scholars. Linguists studied the whole letter, looked at the language, the syntax of the letter, everything, and have determined, listen, this letter is a modern letter. It wasn't written during slavery. But yet and still, because it fits a narrative, this Negro will still recite this Willie Lynch letter if this is the, if this, it's the Bible. And of course, actually, it is. It's the Bible for them because it's the Bible of victimization because it helps to foster this belief that somebody is oppressing me. This is the reason why you Negroes are running around upset with that cop. But you will not reference the fact that this sister comes from a broken home, a dysfunctional home, a home that has been destroyed by the public policies that have been promoted by the Democratic Party that you Negroes love and support in every major election. If you want to find the source of what happened in that classroom, Negro, look in a mirror. I know y'all not going to like this. I know you're not. Because I know a lot of y'all don't have the ability to connect these dots. Y'all not going to be able to look and see, you know what? He's right. No, you're going to try to bicker and argue, and of course you're going to say you support a new cop. No, no, no. I'm telling you that if you take a child and put them in that same scenario who has a mother and a father who and they're not tolerating any BS, would you act a fool in school? That situation would have never happened. Never happened. That cop would have never been called. That cop would have never been even summoned to that classroom because that student would have understood, listen, I don't need this teacher calling my mother and father because if they call, if he calls my mother and father, let him know that I'm clowning in class, I already know what it is when I get home. But see, y'all don't want to deal with that. It's easier for you Negroes to blame Whitey because this is what you Negroes have come to do best.